welcome to our online event. Uh, we're calling this Quarantine Quarrels because we all have been quarantined and if you're like me, you might have been quarreling just a little bit. But I am super glad that you are here. I'm Jenny Boyette and I have been self-quarantined with my four amazing daughters. Um, this is our family. I have triplets that are 16 and a 10 year old and it is so fun, isn't it, to be sheltered in place? My friend Kathleen Edelman uh, started teaching on the temperaments many years ago. We started seeing her as a personal coach and she's helped me navigate a ton of stuff. She did an online event last June and we are going to take some of that footage with us and incorporate it into some of what we're living through with this COVID-19 and hopefully make it relevant so you guys can have some good family discussions. What I love about Kathleen is it's all, everything she does is based on scripture and it's based on Ephesians 4.29, which is do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is for building others up according to their needs. And who, if that is not a challenge all the time, but especially when you're in quarantine and sheltering in place, it is. So what to expect? Honestly, this is totally casual and we just want to provide some good content and for good discussion. And so we're going to show some clips of Kathleen teaching the material and then I'm going to interrupt her, pop in. You're going to get to meet my girls that are here and we're going to just share some things that we've learned and we're navigating and hopefully throughout this process, we'll all learn a little bit together and hopefully not have as many quarantine quarrels. So I'm excited to jump in. What we're gonna talk about today is what I've spent 25 plus years coaching individuals, families, spouses, coworkers. And I've experienced firsthand how impactful this information can be. And even on a high level, you're gonna take away things today that are gonna make a difference. So what we wanna do today is we wanna start talking about temperament in Ephesians 4.29. Now, the concept of the temperaments has been around for thousands of years. There's documentation going back as far as Hippocrates. And because it's Hippocrates and it's thousands of years ago, we're going to talk about the temperaments, but we're not going to use the Greek names. The Greek names can be a mouthful. So we've matched them with colors so that it's a little bit easier to understand but you're gonna see the Greek names because I would like you to know where they originate from. So we have the yellow, sanguine, the red, choleric, the blue is melancholic, and the green is phlegmatic. What we wanna understand about this may sound simple at first, but it's so just the foundation and the fundamental base that we have to build upon is so critically important. So let's talk about these a little bit. The top two, the sanguines and the cholerics, they are extroverts. So our first thing we wanna know is extrovert does not mean that we like to be around a lot of people. What in communication it truly means is your thoughts and emotions go outward. These people have no filter. They just Bleh, you know, and then they're the ones going, oh my gosh, maybe I shouldn't have said that or they just needed to know. And they might even use that finger to say it. They just needed to know. It's just out before they can even, it even, even hits their brain sometimes. So these people talk before they think. The blues and the greens, they are introverts. So they are processors. This would be me. Uh, if you were today to ask me after this, hey, Kathleen, would you like to go to lunch? It's gonna look something like this. Hmm, where are we going? Who's going? When will we be back? You know, I have a one o'clock appointment. I'm gonna process through it and then I'm gonna give you an answer. So well, hence the blues and the greens, we think before we talk. So this is very important because it's starting to set the stage of the differences between the people in the four temperaments we're talking about. Now, you have the bottom and the top and the bottom. Now we're gonna go side to side. The reds and the blues in the temperaments are task-oriented people. They will pick a task over a person every day of the week. The, the reds are motivated by goals and ideas. 
They seek objectivity and clarity in situations and decisions. Rather than being concerned about how somebody feels about something or is affected by it. So the task people, when faced with a choice of being truthful or tactful, they're gonna pick truth every single time. The yellows and the greens are people-oriented. They're gonna pick people over tasks. These are people who want harmony in relationships. They, want, they do take others' needs and feelings into account. They have a natural desire to please and build relationships. They put a very high priority on getting along, so much so that they're the first to be cooperative or adaptable. They really just want everybody to be happy. Why is that important to have this foundation that we're building on? Because what happens when you don't understand that foundation is these very kind green people fall through the cracks because this is an introvert that likes to be around people. They may be quiet, but they love to be part of the group. Then you have the reds who are extroverts that are task oriented. They even wanna know themselves so much that maybe they're treating people like tasks. Okay, okay, pause just for a second. So this is so good. Okay, so what Kathleen was just teaching about thinking before speaking, I'm curious how many of you are that person or look around your family right now and point to the person that is your extrovert, right? That person probably is raising their hand because they're very proud of that, right? Absolutely. So I have four extroverts out of five of us. And so let me tell you a little bit about what that looks like at dinner. It looks like all of us talking um, over each other, interrupting each other. We get louder so that we can have that attention and grab um, the conversation. And so my one introvert just sits there quietly. She's engaged, but doesn't even feel the need to add anything to the conversation and is more quiet. So if you're trying to still figure out in your family who might be the extrovert and who might be the introvert, maybe think through a dinner time or a meal that you've had together and think through who was the one talking and who was the one listening a little bit more. Okay, so now I wanna talk about the people versus task. Uh, the people that are task focused, you guys have been really wanting to get some things done during the shelter in place. Maybe it's an opportunity to get a bunch of home projects done. You are wanting to check things off your list or you're trying to juggle work and homeschool and you're just really trying to knock it off because the way that you value your time is that you've gotten a lot done. So you have been very productive. Now, our people people, they are really missing the relationships and the face-to-face -face interaction. And so how they feel valued and productive, in a sense, is that they've cared for somebody or that they've had a great relational conversation. So you guys might be intentionally scheduling Zoom calls with friends or FaceTime, um, walking the neighborhood just to wave at people. Or one of my favorites is you saw someone post that it's a birthday parade and you don't know them that well, but you have made your sign and you are now gonna drive the neighborhood and honk your horn to wish that person a happy birthday. Um, because that's how you fill that need and that focus of people. So what we really want you guys to do right now is just to take a few minutes as a family to talk through who are the people people and who are the task people. But even more so than that, what is maybe something that a task person has been really wanting to do and what could the family do to help give that person some space and some time to accomplish some things on their list? How could the family build that person up in doing that? And then for the people people, um, what does that person need? Maybe it's um, a task person needs to be a little bit more focused or help make a sign for a drive-by. What are some things that you guys could do as a family to make sure that your people people are loved well and your task people are loved well and it might lead to a little bit less quarreling? We're gonna have you pause for this discussion right now and then when you press play, Kathleen will be back for more. Each temperament has something that's very unique and wired to that temperament. And so as I go through these, think about, does this sound like me? Because this is what's so beautiful about each temperament. 
The yellows, what they are and so uniquely wired is to be in the moment. These people see the best in people first. The best in people and the best in circumstances first. The reds, this is a visionary. This person can throw a net and see a vision so clear, as clear as can be. That's what they own that no other temperament can do. The blues, what's unique to the blues, and you're, you're gonna find out I happen to be a blue. In fact, I'm probably a navy blue. And what I hear a lot is, oh my gosh, you're pointing out the negatives. And then the blue, if you're blue in here, you know exactly what I'm saying. Why are you always pointing out the negatives and the problems? I have reworded that to say that the blues are uniquely designed to anticipate obstacles. So we are uniquely designed to anticipate all obstacles. So when you have a friend or a work colleague that's a red that sees from A to B so clearly and they're focused on B, it would behoove those two people to become very good friends because I'm gonna see every obstacle from A to B. And if we work together, we're gonna be victorious. And that's part of understanding the temperaments, is leaning into the strengths of somebody who's not wired like you. So blues, we anticipate the obstacles. What's unique to the beautiful green temperament, and no other temperament does this, they are the calm in the midst of chaos. This is a person that is so calm, they're just never real. I'm married to this person and then once in a while there's a blip, but in 31 years, not many blips. But if this building happened to be on fire, we would want to be behind the reds because they would save our lives. <laughs> but it would be the greens that would be coming up alongside us saying, you're going to be okay. We'll be fine. We'll get out of this okay. So remember, each temperament has their own unique wiring that no other temperament has. Especially in communication, a good way to think about your temperament is it's like your first language. It's how you naturally respond, what comes naturally to you. So I know we've just talked a little bit, we're just tipping at the iceberg edge, but I would hope you're starting to get a feel. But if not, I want you to watch this short video and see if this doesn't help you start to solidify a little bit more your temperament. No more? Are we getting closer? What's fascinating to me after doing this for so long, like three decades, it doesn't matter the size of the group, it seems to always be just so evenly paced out between the temperaments, which makes it a lot of fun. Well, each temperament is hardwired with a whole list of strengths and weaknesses, and we're going to talk about them. But why weaknesses? Everybody's like, why weaknesses? When I talk to children, I only talk strengths at the beginning. 
But with adults, like you all sitting here, I'm gonna talk weaknesses because God was very intentional. He, we know it's light in here because we know dark. We know loud because we know quiet. In order for us to really grasp and understand our strengths, we have to know our weaknesses. So it's not where we wanna function in our weaknesses, where we would do in the flesh, but we wanna know they're there so we can choose a strength. See, this is really an important point because you saw in the videos some of the strengths. Reds are dynamic leaders. Yellows are enthusiastic. Blues are analytical and compassionate. Greens are patient. But I really want, because this is such an important point, to go over these a little bit more thoroughly. So let's look at the yellows. Everybody goes, why do you start with the yellows? Well, it's not because they want attention and affection and approval, but because they want attention and affection, we start with them. (laughs) So we're starting with the yellows. Some of the strengths of these yellows are they're joyful, they're encouraging, they're affectionate. Again, they're popular, they're in the moment, they talk in stories, they think in stories, they're curious. But how do they know all that? because they have a set of weaknesses. They can also be compulsive talkers. They can elaborate and exaggerate. They hate to be alone. They interrupt. And I say that because I'm a blue. They interrupt and they can be scatterbrained. Okay, so does that sound like anybody in your household? It doesn't sound like anybody in our household, does it? Ha, not true, because I'm a yellow and my daughter McKenna, we call her Mac, she's a yellow as well. And um, one of her biggest strengths that I've especially seen just literally yesterday was she is so encouraging. She had a friend or has a friend and was having a really hard day, had just moved and um, had gotten some really tough news. And she immediately jumped into action and went to the store and got her uh, some flowers and some candy and went and surprised her. And it totally made this girl's day. And your encouraging and thoughtfulness is one of the things I love most about you. And I think it's a huge strength, so. Well, thank you. Um, I think one of my favorite strengths about my mom is she's so popular. Like, I work at Chick-fil-A and every single time someone comes up, oh, your mom's getting wet? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Do you want a chicken sandwich for that? Like, it's just, um, I think it's really cool because she's probably more popular than me. Um, I look up to that. I think that's really cool. Oh, thanks, Dad. All right, well, now we have to go on to our weaknesses. So what is one of the weaknesses that Kathleen talked about? Interrupting is that. Okay. Um, one time where we go to church, um, I got called out by the pastor for talking. Um, not one of my best moments, <laughs> but I am sorry for everyone who was there and had to see that. And also to the pastor Marquise, I am truly sorry about that. Um, and I was listening. I do listen to everything you said, or try to. <laughs> <laughs> try to. That's good. Well, I would say one of the things I've noticed about me, even more so being in quarantine, is um, I hate to be alone. And I try to get the girls to participate in a family game night or a movie night, and they just don't want to. They just like to sit in their rooms on their screens and talk to their other friends, and I wish they would join me for a movie night. Well, maybe, huh? No. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we'll see. Uh, We're going to still work on that here in the Boyette household. But for now, why don't you guys take a few minutes and talk about the yellows in your household and see what strengths come to mind and maybe what opportunities for growth in the weakness section comes to mind and um, have some good discussion time. The Reds, this is a person who's decisive. They excel in emergencies. They delegate well. They're self-directed. They're confident and driven people. How do they know that? Because they can be bossy. They can be impatient, quick-tempered, arrogant. They dislike tears and emotions. Again, we want to know one to know the other, and you want to know where am I functioning right now? What do I struggle with the most? Okay, so now we get to talk about the reds, and I am blessed to have two strong reds in our family. This is my daughter, Skylar, and one of my triplets, Addie. And so one of the things I want to share first is what I see, some of your strengths, 
So I'm gonna talk with Addie first. I feel that you are very driven. So Addie is so driven that she decided she wanted to try out for cheerleading um, on one day. <laughs> and then she worked with me and everybody else to make sure her physical and everything was turned in by the next day. She was sick. You missed the first day of practice, like to learn the routines and you were determined to stay up and get those routines and the dances and the cheers and you did it and she made it and she had never cheered before in her life. So when Addie puts her <laughs> mind to something, she does it and I love that about Addie. Um, and on Skylar, gosh, she is um, so self-directed and it is a blessing for me because now that I'm a homeschool mom, she sets her alarm, she gets up, she knows exactly what website to go to, she gets on her Zoom call, or not a Zoom call, her Microsoft Teams call, and she just does it and does not need any direction from me um, to act, make that happen. And I just think it's fantastic. And so they are both um, driven and both very self-directed. So now I want to hear from you guys of what you think one of the weaknesses that Kathleen mentioned. Which one comes to mind? Addie, which one comes to mind for you? <laughs> um, which one am I doing? Which one comes to mind? Is it... Well, so let's pause. You were doing tears and emotions. Just oh. like, but if you want to pick a different one, you can. No, we can do that. All right, one. so now we need to go back and we'll say, okay. See, how do I say that? <laughs> this is so dumb. How do I? Because emotions are gross. Like, that's like, what do I say? I guess you just don't you like emotions. emotions. Like, the other day, we were all watching a movie as a family, and... One of the only times we they allowed me to have a movie as a family, but yeah, so on. And it was supposed to be like a sad movie, and everyone was crying, and I didn't feel the need to cry. <laughs> me either. <laughs> yeah, well, imagine that. My two reds did not want to cry at that movie. It was so sad, but yes. Okay, that does... That is very true. I test to Addie, um struggling with that so all right what about you miss what's one thing that uh, sticks out to you as far as the weaknesses impatience impatient okay tell me a time when you found yourself impatient or what did you do the last time you were impatient I moan. Moan, just... mean yeah. and stomp off and get frustrated with everybody yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. I, I definitely have seen that happen as well. Yes, she likes things done her way and a lot of the time to go very fast, don't she? Yes, okay. Well, those are my reds. So we wanna give you guys a chance in your family to talk to your reds and really have them share um, what is maybe one of their weaknesses that they struggle with. And you guys can share some of their strengths of what you see as a strength of theirs. The blues, this is a person that's analytical and a perfectionist, creative, musical, artistic. They can also be moody, critical, withdrawn, skeptical, judgmental, right? Insecure socially. I'm sure every blue in here can tell you that throughout our, our lifetime, most blues feel odd. We feel like a square peg going into a round hole. And that's now you know I'm standing on stage and saying that you're not alone. We all feel that way sometimes. Okay, now it's time to talk to our blues. And I've asked Addie to stay because she is a good mix of red and blue and has the strengths and weaknesses of both of those. So I wanted her to stay. And uh, when I was hearing Kathleen talk through the blues, the one thing that stood out for me was perfectionist because Addie puts so much pressure on herself to have everything perfect. And she wants schoolwork to be perfect. And she really puts forth a ton of effort to uh, make sure she does things with excellence and as perfect as she can, which I think she puts too much pressure on herself for that. But um, it is a strength of hers to really be um, detailed and get things right. Okay, Addie, when Kathleen was talking, which one of the weaknesses stood out to you? Skeptical. I am very skeptical of people and they have to kind of prove themselves to me first. First. Yeah, I've seen that. But then you're soft and once they get in, you're very um, welcoming to them. Yes. Yes. 
Okay, well, that is my blue of the family. So we want to give you guys a chance to spend some time getting to know the strengths and weaknesses of your blue family members. So take this time and have some good discussion. The Greens, this is an innately kind person. They're diplomatic, they're even-tempered, they're patient, they're tolerant, they're great mediators, but they can also be unenthusiastic, indecisive, have no sense of urgency, and resist change. This is actually the most stubborn and strong-willed temperament out of the four. They out-stubborn out and out-strong-willed the Reds, hands down. Okay, so now let's talk about our greens. I have my green, Riley, here. Um, and she's <laughs> identical to Addie, who is here as the Red. And um, when Kathleen just went over all of those strengths, I absolutely, so many resonated, but I absolutely think um, even keeled, even steady-tempered is Riley. She is always our... Um, like, I can always expect her just to kind of stay right about here. It doesn't, she's not too loud, not too soft, um, innately kind for sure. But she brings a, a sense of calm to just the chaotic, noisy household a lot of times. So that is what I would say Riley's strength is. So Riley, when you were listening to Kathleen explain some of the weaknesses, what stood out to you? Um... All of them, really. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, probably the stubbornness, because I can be very stubborn, and like having no like urgency to get things done. Okay, yeah, that's a good one to pick. So let's talk about that. Now that we're homeschooling and you have an assignment due, what does that look like for you? Last minute plan. Okay. So the assignments do at midnight. So when do you start that assignment? 11.30. Okay, awesome. Yes, it is. That is my Riley for sure. That is my green. So we want to give you guys an opportunity to get to know the greens in your family and talk through some of their strengths and weaknesses now. Temperament dictates the phrases and the words that you use. Literally, each temperament talks and has common phrases that they use. So the sanguines, for example, or the yellows, they often speak with animated, fun, exaggerated, people-oriented words. If they're asked to go to lunch, there's not where, they're, where are you going, there's who's going, who's gonna be there. Like, who might I see, right? So they'll say things like, that sounds fun. Come join in. Oh, I totally forgot. They're gonna say things like this. Okay, pause. So Kathleen just gave us exactly what it sounds like to be a yellow in normal times. But what about during quarantine? Our yellows are so desperate for people. It may sound like, I miss my friends. Or can we please go somewhere? Or if you have littles around you, they are probably at your feet following you around. Just mommy, daddy, sister, brother, will you please play a game with me? Our yellows are desperate for their people and their friends. And so like one of my teenagers said the other day, I am done with this. I'm not following the rules and I'm going to find my people. So why is this important? This is important because what people say, specifically our yellows, is like a cry for help. So those yellows, they need people and they need some attention. So we want you to take a few minutes and talk as a family and ask your yellows, what are some things that they are feeling and needing and what could you guys do as a family to help build them up and love them better? where the reds are gonna talk and speak more often with bold, bossy, confident, or controlling words. So their words, when you start listening, they're gonna say things like, I'll do it, hurry up, follow my lead. They're almost like little just statements like that, just like they don't waste any air when they talk. It's just out, right? <laughs> just gonna condense it. So that's how they talk. 
condensed. Okay, so where are my reds? Have you guys felt yourself saying any of these things while being at home? Hey, this isn't a vacation, or just do what I say, or give me a minute, because our reds value productivity so much that although we all have a huge to-do list potentially, they are looking at that list as if, if they don't accomplish it, then the day wasn't productive. So they are looking at homeschooling and work from home and laundry and cleaning and cooking much less all of the home projects they're hoping to accomplish as a way of productivity that makes them feel valuable. So we want you guys to spend a few minutes as a family and talk to your Reds and see what are some things the family could do to rally around your Reds to help maybe check some things off their list and help them feel a little bit more productive. The blues will talk more detailed and analytical with compassionate and sometimes very creative words. They're gonna be very thoughtful as well in their words. I've been giving it some thought. That's what the blues, this is gonna, this, I probably say this all the time. I don't trust him or her. Like it could be a stranger that's walking towards me and I'll say to my mom, I don't trust them, right? <laughs> They're walking way too close to me right now. Um, are you sure that's safe? Again, as you start listening, you're gonna realize that we use words right out of our wiring. Okay, Blues, what does it sound like for you? If you're sheltering in place and you have little kids around, you probably just are desperate for just a moment alone. You could even be like one of my friends that's hiding in her car just to get a few moments of peace and quiet. On the flip side, if you're an empty nester or don't have kids at home or live alone, you may be living your best life. All that alone time is fantastic and you have space and silence and everything that you need to be productive. Remember when Kathleen said blues are known for pointing out the negative? Well, blues, with the uncertainty and the fear of the pandemic, that may be all they're talking about. So blues, do any of these statements ring true? Will it ever be safe to go out in public again? Or I knew this would happen. Or I should have been more prepared. So you guys take a few minutes and talk to your blues and see what are they feeling and maybe what could the family do to rally around them and provide some encouragement during this time that they might be pointing out the negatives. So the green will often speak easygoing, patient, kind words. They'll say things like this, hmm, no big deal. I'm good with whatever. Can it wait till tomorrow? Because why do it today, right? Why do it today when it can wait till tomorrow? It's like kind of your motto, right? right? There's no urgency, right? The trash doesn't come till 11 and it's only 10.30, right? <laughs> Okay, Green, so what does this sound like for you? You're so even keeled and kind and kind of like the chameleon of temperaments. You adapt to those that are around you. However, you probably are focused on the people, right? So you're asking things like, how are you doing? Or how can I help? However, your lack of enthusiasm and lack of sense of urgency um, may be also sounding a little bit like, mm, I'm good here, or it's not due till Friday, I'll start later. Because our greens are so even-tempered and calm, like I said earlier, Riley is the calm in the storm of our household. You may not be knowing how the greens are feeling during this pandemic storm. So we want you guys to take a few minutes and check in on your greens and see how they're doing and what the family can do to love them better. So I can give you firsthand how this can look though because I have two children. Um, I have a son and a daughter. Uh, my son sp skipped fifth grade into my daughter's grade. So from the sixth grade on, they've been in the same grade. So Avery is a senior at UGA and Bryce is a senior at Georgia Tech. So I can clap for both, right, depending on the day. Um, but Bryce was over in Ireland and he was studying abroad, and um, he was so kind for his blue mother to keep in touch with me to know that he was okay. So he sent our family this text. 
Tour was awesome. Also talked to somebody from the UK the whole time. It was so really interesting. Just got back on the bus to Limerick safe and sound. Now that is a very blue statement, but blues, how often do we ever put anything in caps? I mean, that tour must have been like a really good tour, right? Because he also put an exclamation point, which again, we just don't do. Um, but it was very interesting and look, He's back at in Limerick safe and sound, so mama's heart is good. My daughter, who's yellow, sends this. Yay, two exclamation points. I'm so thrilled to hear that and so cool that you got to talk to somebody from the UK. I'm glad you're back safe and had fun. There it is. First of all, I don't see anything in here that Bryce said he had fun. He said it was interesting. <laughs> and then two emojis, like only two emojis, but the two emojis, heart and a poo, you know, that must have been so fun. You talk to somebody the whole time. She doesn't even mention the tour, right? <laughs> but here's how the temperaments talk. One minute later, Bryce sends this. Oh no, somebody sat next to me on the bus. The whole trip <laughs> is ruined. This is a real conversation. Now we're really going to see that temperaments speak right out of their colors. But I don't want to leave you red and greens out. So I actually had sent to me some coworkers that had an exchange that I think illustrates red and green perfectly. But let's see what you guys think. Jessica, who's a friend of mine, um, Jessica is red. I don't even think Jessica has another color. I think Jessica, Jessica is red, and if it's anything, it's a spl like a splash of something, but this girl is red. And she says to her friend, Christy, who's very green, coworker, she says, I'm stopping for coffee before the meeting. Do you want something? Okay, you reds know what you already want the answer to be, right? Here's Christy's response. <laughs> Two minutes later, she's processing. Hmm. What do I want? I'm not sure. So how do you think that's, what, what do you think Jessica's doing right now? This. Hello. I'm in the drive-thru, right? Cholerics, are, is the hair starting to go up on the back of your neck yet? So then what does Christy do? Hmm. I'm really, I'm thinking about it. I'm processing it. I'm kind of indecisive, right, Greens? You're pressured. You're tr she, you know Jessica, so you know she wants an answer. So you're feeling the pressure right now. So this is what happens. Christy says, okay, maybe a vanilla laced ate question mark, or if that's too tricky, just black coffee's fine. Or if you're already on your way back, don't worry about it. I'm good with whatever. Like, just bring me a bottled water. Like, I'm good. So, just, which one? I'm surprised that was not in all caps. Which one? Look, you have 10 seconds to decide. It's like, right? Make a decision. Christy. Oh my gosh, Reds, what is Jessica doing right now? She is like revving that odyssey in that drive through Like, oh my God, I'm gonna kill this woman. I'm just gonna get, and then Christy says, iced Americano with cream and sugar. Oh, no. here it's Jessica, huge eye roll. I'm surprised this is all she put. Just a huge eye roll. But see, temperaments speak their languages. You cannot change them. Okay, so now we're gonna have some fun. I know you yellows were really hoping there was gonna be a game in here. And there is, and red, there could be a winner. Blues, just let's play along a little bit. And um, greens, you're gonna just go with the flow. So here we go. 
Okay, so when you hear about social distancing, which one is the blue response? Are glad for the clear advice, you're happy to go along with it? Number two, appreciate that it's the most efficient way to get things back to normal. Number three, are crushed. It goes against all your instincts to avoid other people. Or number four, wonder if six feet is enough to protect you. So you head to the CDC website to do your own research. Okay, which one is it from all the things that we've gone over and everything that you've just learned? What number do you think it is? Everybody hold up your hand. Did you get it right? It is number four. Wonder if six feet is enough to protect you, so you head to the CDC website to do your own research. Okay, Red, so you're keeping score, but because you're still learning, let's reveal all the answers. Does that make sense to you guys? Are you getting it right? Are you starting to see how it all plays out in this quarantine time? All right, let's go on. Someone suggests another family walk around the neighborhood. Which one is the green response? Number one, convince everyone else to go so you can have a few minutes of peace and quiet. Number two, set your Fitbit. You might as well get credit for all the steps. Number three, grab your shoes and hope you'll see some neighborhood friends. Number four, mumble no thanks. You just want to finish your Netflix show. All right, hold up your number. Do you think it's number one, number two, number three, or number four? Ah, the ones that held up number four are right. The Greens would mumble and say, no thanks, you just want to finish your Netflix show. Gotta love our chilled Greens. But let's see, what do you think some of the other answers are? Let's reveal those. Ah, our melancholies sure do like peace and quiet. And our Reds want credit for so many of the things that they do. And the Yellows, gosh, they are missing their friends. Okay, you got the hang of it? Let's go on to the next question. Someone needs to go to the grocery store. Which one is the yellow response? Number one, remind your family you did it last time. It's someone else's turn. Number two, use the outing to grab a few extra treats for yourself and neighbors. Number three, volunteer to go. It'll be exciting. Plus, you're desperate to see other people. Number four, place an online order. There's no way you're letting a loved one step into a grocery store with so many germs. All right, look around the room. Everybody hold up your number. It is number three. That is our yellow. Gosh, they're missing their people right now. Okay, so let's now reveal the other answers just to continue your learning and how some of the other temperaments respond to going to the grocery store. All right, let's go on. Our next question. Actually, it's our last question. So, Reds, I hope you've been keeping score. Your household is down to its last two rolls of toilet paper. Which one is the red response? Number one, use social media to ask your friends which nearby stores have some in stock. Number two, call a family meeting to demonstrate the acceptable three square per use ration. Number three, stay calm. You bought food for your neighbors last week. Maybe they can return a favor and give you a roll or two. Number four, panic and start researching alternatives. You knew this would happen. All right, hold up your numbers. Is it number one, number two, number three, or number four is the red response? Number two, you're right. Call a family meeting to demonstrate the acceptable three square per use ration. Oh my goodness. Well, let's reveal the other answers to see how others respond when your household is down to last two rolls of toilet paper. Excellent. Well, thanks for playing along. I sure hope this is giving you even more insight to what the temperaments are feeling during this quarantine time. Thanks for joining me in my living room and giving me a reason to get out of my PJs today. Now that you know a little bit more about the temperaments, don't be surprised how often you see and hear them all around. But the real key to building others up with your words is to know exactly what to say. And next time, Kathleen and my girls and I will teach you that. Until then, there are free videos on this YouTube channel that will help you understand the temperaments better. And let's be honest, you have a few hours of time on your hands, so you might as well start now. Until next time.